I'm a horrible cook. I could burn a bowl of cereal. If things were left to me, we'd be having burnt toast and ramen noodles every night. Thankfully, my wife is a fantastic cook. Day after day, she makes us wonderful meals. And one of the things that she likes doing is using fresh herbs in her cooking. She has a ton of different herb plants, but currently, nowhere to put them. So, I designed her this. Well, it's all the dimensions of the pieces, but when I put it together, it'll look like this. It's basically a frame nested inside another frame that can be used to hold some herb pots. Kind of like this. I plan on making a few of them, so I'll hook them together and hang them from the ceiling in front of a window, like this. This way, she'll have 12 herbs all hanging together in one spot all easily accessible and easy to manage. It will take advantage of the sunlight that comes through that window, plus it should turn out looking kind of cool too. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's get to it. I decided to use just regular old 2x4s for this project and I calculated that I should only need six to do the whole thing. I first start with a fresh edge, then measure and mark the first piece to cut, and I snuck up to the line with the miter saw. During my sneaking, I create a rough end that I need to clean up before each cut. I could have instead used a stop block, but I didn't. Once I had all the pieces cut to length, I took them over to the joiner to trim down one of the faces and to take off the rounded edges. It took a couple aggressive passes on each piece, but this gave it a real nice face to reference things on moving forward. Then it was on to the planer to get them all down to their final thickness. Over at the table saw, I first trimmed off one of the remaining sides that still had the rounded edge. Then I could flip the piece around, reference that edge against the fence, and cut out my final pieces. This left me with pieces that had nice square corners that stacked up just perfectly. And now it was time to start laying out where the mortises were to go. To simplify things, I just set my combination square at one quarter inch and drew on three of the sides for each mortise. Then to draw on the final side, I used my calipers to space it out appropriately and just slid the square right up to it. Now to cut these mortises, you could use a variety of methods, but I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna use my benchtop mortiser. It's basically a drill press that squeaks a lot and magically drills square holes. I set up a stop block, got things all lined up, and then went through and punched a hole in each mortise section. When I needed to adjust it for the next hole, I just loosened up the locking screw, adjusted the fence, and locked it back down. Overall, it made very short work of cutting the mortises, and it sure beats having to chisel them all out by hand. It may not be nearly as impressive, but hey, if I wanted to impress you, I'd just show you my entire collection of Golden Girls episodes on VHS. And now to cut the tenons, I just raised the blade exactly one quarter inch up and trimmed all four sides. This made it real quick and easy to cut all my tenons since they all had the same shoulder depth. giving it a test fit. Perfect. Now when it came time to cut the cross having joints, I wanted to test things out on a scrap piece of wood first. The two lines indicate how much material needs to be removed and if I line it up on the first one, you can see that it leaves a kerf width gap by the stop block. Well, I have a spacer that I made which is the same width as my blade. When I put that in, the first mark lines up. Then, I just use the piece I'll be inlaying as the spacer to make the second mark line up. So, now I give it a test. I make my first cut with my curve spacer, and I use the inlay piece as a spacer for the second cut, and then I hog out all the material in between. It fits, but it's real tight. No way that it would fit with glue as well. So I measure the thickness of my curve spacer, 
and it comes out to 0 0.131 inches. Now back when I was a world champion card shark, I recalled that the thickness of 12 playing cards is also 0 0.131 inches. With this being the case, I could discard two of them from the top of the stack, because I'm not a cheater, and reduce the thickness by just over two one hundredths of an inch. Now let's go try that cut again. This time, using the cards as a spacer, we'll shave off just a hair from one of the sides and we'll see if our inlay fits any better. Oh, that's perfect. So now that I have my method down, I went ahead and I cut all my cross having joints, testing each one as I went. With all of them cut, it was time to miter the edges of the short pieces. I gave all the pieces a 100 grit sanding to get them ready for glue up. And then I started by first assembling all the cross having joints. Mortise and tenon, cross having, miter joints, you honestly don't need any of that. If you wanted to build this, you could do it just as well with just regular old butt joints and screws. I just have a habit of making the simplest of projects overly complex. With the uprights dry, I could go ahead and glue up the mortise and tenons. And here I am keeping tight bond in business. And then I dropped it down into the pipe clamps and checked for square and then tightened things down for the night. The next step was to cut the miters for the side rails. Since there may have been small variations, I just held up each rail and marked exactly where it needed to be cut. Now gluing this up was a nightmare. I started by putting some glue on each end and then using spring clamps to just hold it in place until I got the other one ready. With both of them held in place by spring clamps, I then used squeeze clamps to pull them in and tighten the joints. Then I replaced the spring clamps with something stronger to keep the joints from shifting. And then I just added a bunch more clamps because I'm paranoid. I asked my wife if she wanted the corners rounded over, and she said she wanted them square, but just to soften the edges. So I attacked each one with some sandpaper to break off the sharp corners. With it all sanded, I sprayed off the dust and got it ready for color. And we decided on a dark espresso colored stain, which I managed to get all over myself by the time I finished the third piece. Three to four coats of spray-on poly will give it the protection it needs and that glossy look that we really like. I bought these really expensive coat racks that I painted dark brown. And next I drilled in some holes in the top and bottom of each rack. The bottom's got screw eyes and the top's got hooks. And I mounted a couple chains into the ceiling joists and hung them up. The final step was to load it up with herbs. So there it is, folks. A hanging herb garden. My wife now has a place indoors where she can have all of her herbs in one place and keep them year round. I really like how it turned out too. The cross having, the miter, the mortise and tenon joints, they all came out very well and I even like the grain pattern of the regular old construction grade pine. Hey, if you liked the video and enjoyed the project, click that thumbs up and leave me a comment below. And of course, if you're not already a subscriber, then consider hitting that button too. And if you want to build this yourself, I'll have free plans available for download in the video description. And like I said before, you don't have to make it nearly as complicated as I did. Just do what you can and have fun with it. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh. Man, that really
broke out of there. Cramp. Dang it. You're an expert leaf picker. I am a really bad leaf picker. <laughs> <laughs> I get bags of that stuff when I mow the yard. Not quite the same flavor. So, no matter how tempting, don't climb it. Okay, because it, it can't hold your weight and it'll come crashing down and it'll make a huge mess and then daddy will make you have to go live in the woods behind the house. How can I live in there? I won't get any food. Well, you'd have to eat berries and acorns. There isn't any. What? Well, you gotta find them. The squirrels find them. Maybe you could just come down and get some food. <laughs> Good morning. Let's eat it. Maybe I can make a shelter off stick.